Hey everybody, um, I'm going to give a quick demonstration on how to use the line tool in Paint 3D. The first thing though that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, the page where I've got some resources on for you. It's the week 14 page, so if you were to click on the weekly art assignment pages, we would go with week 14. All right, what I've got here, these are the previous projects we've been working on this week. Um, and what I've included here are a bunch of searches for line drawings, cartoon line drawings, um, superheroes, Good Morty, Disney, um, whatever it is. Hopefully it'll spark something in you that um, inspires you to, um, uh, to, to want to do this project. Um, so here's like what I'm talking about with cartoon line drawings. We're not, we're not going too heavily in. Um, I would caution you um, if this is your first time using these tools, um, against something starting with something like this. You might want to start a little bit simpler and build your way up. Um, <clears throat> one of the ones that I've chosen here is this little flash one. This is about the level that I would say uh, is good for starting. So you want to save this image and um, save it to a place where you can recall it very quickly. And then you're going to pull up paint. So I'm going to show you right here. Mine has been saved. He's right here. He's on my desktop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Paint 3D. Um, and I am going to open up that program. Um, I have a couple of steps here that I want you to follow. Okay, remember that we're pulling up Paint 3D, not the other Paint app. Okay, when we open up Paint 3D, what we're going to do is we're going to choose um, a new project. Um, in the past, I have, I've encouraged you to change your Canvas options, but we're not going to have to do that right now because we're going to take another step. So I'm going to click on my menu button and I am going to insert, okay? Um, I'm going to pick my flash drawing and what's kind of nice is that this alters the Canvas size for me um, and I can hold shift down to make him a little bit bigger so that he fits. Um, move him down a little bit. Maybe I want to move him to the left or to the right. It doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure that he fits in here. So I want to have him nice and big. And once I'm happy with him, I'm just going to click off to the side. Oops. Wait, I don't want to do that. Um, I skipped an important step. Um, so we're going to go back. I'm going to insert my flash. And before I hit OK on that, I am going to take a look on the side here, um, you will see a button called make sticker. That's what we want to do, especially if you have one. This is kind of like not a, a, a pure black outline, but it's pretty dark to begin with. And many of you might be choosing one with a dark outline. This is going to help you out a lot. We're going to click make sticker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this slider bar and I'm going to lower the opacity. Opacity means how, um, how much of the image shows through. So you can see that when I'm sliding it down to about 50%, my image gets lighter versus when I get to 100%, it gets darker. This is going to be really important for when you're tracing because you want to be able to see your lines. So that being said, now I'm happy with it. I do see that there are some lines up there, but for the purposes of this exercise, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to hit OK on that. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to grab my 2D shapes, and I'm going to start playing around with these tools right up here. Now, as we already know with the line tool, the line tool can be used to make straight lines, right? I can just kind of drag and drop and put them in. Um, but Obviously, not all of our, um, our work is going to use straight lines. So um, one of my first hints to you is going to be to make sure to zoom in. Zooming in is going to be super, super helpful for this. So as I said before, right, the line tool can be used to make straight lines. Um, you're going to notice, wow, that is a really thick line. That's a little bit too thick. So I want to use this adjuster right here, um, and I want to pull it down. I wouldn't go much further down than like four pixels, um, just because when we're going to actually color this in, and so that becomes a little bit harder to, uh, to fill in. Sometimes it actually becomes a dotted line, and then when you're filling in the colors, you find that it moves through, okay? So, right, my line tool can be used to make these straight lines, as you can see here. 
okay? And what I'm doing is with this being lower, uh, lowered opacity, I'm able to kind of trace over the lines that I want. But what happens when I want to do a curved line? Well, that's where these guys come in, into account. My other hint for you, so I said definitely you want to zoom in for this. This is going to be um, one of the most helpful things that you can do. The other thing that I'm going to point out is whenever there's like a hard point, like right here where his head is matching it, meeting his shoulder, that's going to be a good indicator for stopping and starting points, right? So like a point here, points here, those are all going to be good areas where you want to start and stop a line. So I'm going to start my line and we'll, we'll take a look at what the three point line tool can do. Okay, so I can put it here now, as you can see, it's not falling on the line that I want it to, but I can kind of grab and hold um, and I can manipulate the, cur the curve of this line. Now you'll see, I can kind of pull it and stretch it and it kind of works within it, but I wanna make sure that it gets as close to this outline as possible. And so that's what I'm gonna do, okay? Once I'm happy with it, I can hit the check mark and it is set. Um, we're going to move on to the four point line tool. This will um, give you a little bit more control of the curve that you have. Um, I like it. Um, it, uh, it gives you a little bit better of a curve. The other tip that I'm going to give you for this is to make sure that you're not going super long distances. Um, it may be very tempting because you want to get it done. Um, but it, it can be uh, a little bit harder to manipulate. The further you go, the less control you have over these lines. Now you'll notice that this comes as kind of like a squiggle. Um, and so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to try and alter and pull these, these lines to where I want them to be. Um, what I find very useful, see as I, as I moved this line, this one kind of pulled back out. So it really is kind of a balancing tool, a balancing act rather, of just kind of um, moving the lines in succession to get them where you want them to be. Um, and as you can see with the four line tool, even though that was kind of straight, um, I was able to get a pretty good curve on that. I could do that with the three line tool or even the five point tool. It's really a matter of personal taste, okay? So with our five point line tool, that's, um, again, it comes as a swiggle and you'll notice that, you know, we're gonna have to kind of manipulate the points as they go. And as I pull them, you'll notice, yes, it's moving this line and this line when I pull this one, but it also moves these guys down here, further down the line because it is interconnected. You're thinking of it as like almost like a string wrapped around a couple of different points. So sometimes uh, you might get one um, in place where you want it, but uh, when you go to pull on another one, it might pull um, your existing one out of place, okay? So this is what we're doing right now. We're just gonna try and get this as close to the outline as possible. One of the other tips that I like to give is to start with the outline and don't necessarily go too far into detail. Um, the outlines tend to be a little bit bigger, a little bit more forgiving. Um, and that way, by the time you come into the more detailed work of like say the eyes and the hands, um, you'll have a little bit better understanding of how this tool works and which ones you might want to use uh, or a little bit more comfortable with, okay? Um, I'm trying to make sure that all of my lines pretty much like overlap. Um, uh, or, or at least meet, because again, what we're going to do is eventually fill this in with color using our bucket tool, same way the way uh, we had filled in our color wheel. I'm not gonna show you that because you're pretty good on that. We've already covered that. Um, if you'd like to though, you can definitely take a look in, um, in our video lessons and check that one out. Um, but that's pretty much all that I have for you. Uh, you're just kind of remembering to uh, <clears throat> remembering to do shorter distances. Um, you want to make sure that you're zooming in, and you want to definitely make sure that um, the points right here and here these are your stopping and ending points. 
Um, you also want to make sure that when you are manipulating the three, four, and five point tools, that you are taking a look and making sure that all of the points you might have to go back and forth and manipulate these tools. Now, the other important thing that I want you to know uh, how to do is how to save your project. Actually, if you take a look here, you'll notice I want to show you actually before I get into that how the three and the four might work a little bit better. You'll see that this kind of, I can fit it up here, but or I can fit it down here, but I can't make it fit all together. So this is where the four point line tool or the five point line tool might even work, okay? So I might, what I like to do is I like to put it where it should start and stop, but it's really a matter of personal choice. Let's see. So there you go. When you have the, the four, it gives you a little bit more freedom um, and you can get tighter curves. Okay. So that being said, um, how to save our work. Let's say you worked, um, it took you a little bit of time to find your project, you made your sticker, you played with the opacity, um, maybe you changed your mind. It, it, really, um, it really is just, uh, I encourage you to work to your abilities. But if we're at the end of the period, you're not done yet. Um, what you want to do is you want to save your project here and you want to save it as a paint 3D project. When you save it as a paint 3D project, you'll notice it says you'll be able to edit this project in paint later, meaning you can work on it. When you save it as an image, this is common in other, um, in other programs, um, it flattens it. Um, it makes it so that it is, um, you, you don't really get to edit it anymore, okay? So you want to definitely save it as a paint 3D project so you can come back to it. And there you have it. Um, really, all this is is just getting comfortable with the line tools and figuring out how it works. All right. So um, I will see you later and have fun.